Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for joining me for today's video. I hope you're all really, really well, in case you couldn't tell by the cosy jumper and the cup of chamomile tea in front of me. Today's video is going to be a really chilled out, chatty, heart to heart type of video. And today I wanted to talk all about our futures and the things we can do now that will impact our futures. And that's everything from career choices, A-level, university choices, internships, to preparing financially for the future. So I thought I would do this for you because I did get quite a few of those type of questions when I did my Q&A recently. So I thought I would dedicate an entire video to it. So this video is in collaboration with Aviva who want us to start thinking about the future that we want now because after all, now is the time that we're building our future. It's little changes that we can make now that really will impact the way that we live in a few years time, whether that's five, 10, 20 or 30, even more, even further into the future. Things that we can do now can really affect how we live in the future and our quality of life. So they've launched an online tool called Shape My Future, which you can use to give you an idea on how your life may look based on things like how much you squirrel away each month towards your retirement plans, whether you're a homeowner, all those kind of things, or you can flip it the other way around. So you can say, okay, I want to live in a four bedroom home with the latest smartphone, etc. And it will give you a little idea as to how much you need to be popping by for your future. So a really, really useful tool, very lighthearted, just gives you an idea on how you can start preparing for your future today. So I touched a little bit on my past career and experiences in my Q&A video, but I wanted to go a little bit more in detail about that in today's video, as well as sharing a few tips that I picked up along the way that hopefully will help you to get to be where you want to be in the short term or in the long term future as well. So just in case you don't know, I'll give a very brief overview. I'm now a full-time blogger and YouTuber. I'm very lucky to say that I'm doing my dream job now and it is my full-time job. It's my passion and my full-time job. Before before that, I used to work at a software company. I was marketing manager for a software company who sold their software to retailers. So I'm still within the fashion industry, but more on the technology side of it. Before that, I was more in the fashion industry. I was marketing assistant at Mulberry, the luxury leather handbag company. And I also interned there for over a year. And I interned there while I was studying. So I studied at London College of Fashion, graduated with a BA honors in fashion management, a first class honors. And before that, I did A-levels of English, economics, textiles, Spanish, and photography. So that's a little brief overview of my past to give you an idea of where I'm coming from. When thinking about your future, I would say my first tip, whether you're in school, university, or in a job, would be to not ignore your passions. I'm such a true believer in doing what you love, and don't ever think that your passion can't turn into a career. I think if you love something enough, you will enjoy doing what you're doing, and you'll want to work harder at it, which can potentially lead to a career. So in my personal experience, I never thought that blogging would ever be able to lead to a career. Even two or three years ago, yes, there were people doing blogging full time, but they were few and far between. And it was a hobby that I absolutely loved because I was so passionate about it. I put a lot of time into it, but never did I think it would be able to be my full time job. But just by working hard at it and continually putting in the effort, eventually I was able to turn that into my full time career. So your passion could be photography, it could be styling, it could be completely unrelated to the fashion industry. They're just examples that I know of because that's what fills my head. But don't ever think that your passion can't become your career. You can pave the way, you can create a career. I think if you work hard and there are some financial gains to what you're doing, then pave the way and you can make a career out of your passion. I think for me it always helped that I was a little bit entrepreneurial at school and at a young age. I never really thought about the financial implications, but more about the lifestyle that I wanted when I was older. I knew I wanted to be able to afford nice things, live in a nice house, go on nice holidays. And so I always worked hard because of this, because of these aspirations. So whether that was charging 20p to read people's fortunes in the school playground, or making my own jewelry just at home in front of the TV, making little clay charms, I was always doing something that would prepare for my future, if that makes sense. I was always wanting to earn a little bit more pocket money, do something productive or learn a new skill. 
And I think that leads on quite nicely to my second tip, which would be to surround yourself with positive and supportive people. Because if you've got people around you that are telling you you can do things and they're willing to help you out in any way they can, whether that's just offering an ear when you've got a problem that you just need to spurt out, or whether that's offering you physical help. I always used to enlist my brother or my boyfriend into softening the clay when I was trying to make the jewellery. It's so important to just have a network of people around you that are supportive and that are positive. So next I want to talk about how to plan for your future and a quote that's always stuck with me, some words of wisdom that someone once told me are be the person you want to be in your mind before you become that person and I've lived by that so many times and I think it's so true. I remember when I first started my blog I probably only had about 500 readers for every single blog post. It was definitely not the biggest blog in the world, not where it is today not that it's the biggest blog in the world today, but I just went ahead and I printed all these really fancy business cards with Fashion Mumbler, Josie Fear, editor and creator, and I would go around at these events like really confident with myself, really confident with my blog, handing out these business cards, introducing myself as editor of Fashion Mumbler, and just by having that confidence, people stood up and they took me seriously. They wanted to know about this blog, they wanted to work with Fashion Mumbler. So I would say that by being positive and confident and creating this successful business around you, people will believe it, people will want to work with you. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you really have to believe in yourself before anyone else can believe in you. Cheesy, and you've probably heard it before, but when you think about it, so, so true. Something that I've always done as well is thinking quite logistically about my future. So things that I always wanted, of course, was financial independence and living this nice lifestyle where I didn't really need to worry about money too much. And I think looking back, I've actually done small things over the years that have helped to build that future. The major thing, of course, is all around me, the house that I live in. This house is my financial security. It is by far the biggest investment I've ever made, and it was not an easy investment. I can definitely tell you that. It's still not an easy investment. Living in London is not cheap. It gives me the financial security and the peace of mind knowing I've got a roof over my head and that financial security for my future. And by not going out partying every night or every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I can save a lot of money. The money that I would spend by partying, I put back into the house, continually investing in my future, thinking about long-term benefits as opposed to short-term good times or good nights out. Moving even further forward, I think it's really important that even at such a young age, even if you're in your teens or in your 20s, it's so important to think further ahead even about what life is gonna be like when you retire because suddenly, your income potentially is just gonna stop. Like you're not gonna have an employer giving you a regular wage or as someone that's self-employed, I may not be able to physically work as long as I do. So this is something that I really started to think about recently. So it's for that very reason that Aviva asked me to check out their Shape My Future tool. And they want us to start thinking now about the changes that we can make or the things that we can be doing to ensure that we are where we want to be financially in 10, 20, 30 or 40 years. So it's a really light-hearted tool on their website, I'll leave a little link down below, where you can fill in how much money you're putting aside each week or each month, how much money your employer is putting aside each month for you, and also things like whether you're a homeowner, how much income you're going to be getting from things like rent, and then it gives you an idea of the kind of lifestyle you could expect to lead based on those figures when you retire or you can do it the other way around. So I said to it, I really want to be living in a nice four bedroom home. I want to have the latest satellite TV, the latest smartphone. I want to be able to afford insurance for my family, home insurance. And it told me the figure that I need to start to think about squirreling away each month in order to make that a reality. It was quite shocking actually, I hadn't really realised that I need to be putting away quite so much, but definitely a good way to get you thinking about what you can be doing now to prepare for your future. So I really hope this little chat has got you guys thinking about how you can potentially start to be preparing for your future now. I know that by using the Shape My Future tool on the Aviva site, it's definitely got that ball in motion in my head, so I hope you guys will check it out. It really is just a very quick and easy tool, I'll leave links and the content hub down below and there's some videos on it as well, all links down below. And also on that topic I thought I would open up the floor as it were and do a little Q&A based around 
careers and futures because as I mentioned that is something that you were really interested in in my last Q&A video. So I'm going to check my Twitter and see what you guys have been asking. Okay so Rachel has said, Josie had you not become a blogger what would you be doing now and when did you decide that blogging was the thing for you? Love you with little blue heart, cute, thank you Rachel. Okay so had I not been blogging, in the short term I would probably still be at a software company, it was only a year and a bit ago that I left there so I'm sure I'd probably still be there working as marketing manager. The company, I keep tabs on them and they're growing, they're doing really well so I think I'd probably still be there. I would also be keeping my eye on the fashion industry and the digital industry. I was always really interested in both so I would definitely be working in that field but in the long term I think even if blogging hadn't been the route that I'd gone down I'm sure one way or another I'd have ended up working for myself because I honestly think some people are not designed for an office job, some people just are the kind of person that is happy to do their own thing and some people are just designed to be self-employed and have their own businesses and I think I'm that kind of person so I'm sure after a few years within the office work 9 to 6 industry I probably would have ended up doing my own thing one way or another. Alicia has asked do you have any tips on getting a summer internship? Uh, yes okay well my first tip would be to really refine your CV. One of the best quotes that my uni lecturer Sally gave me she said that if she can fit her career, her 40 year really super experienced career on one page of A4 then you can too, especially as students. We were all there with like these four page long CVs like oh I worked in a chip shop, I worked as a waitress. I would say firstly refine your CV because when looking for an internship people just have a few seconds, they just pan the page and they decide yes or no straight away. So get your CV looking good, a little bit of personality, make it a bit different but stick to one A4 page, not front and back, just one page. That would be my first tip. My second tip would be if you can to try and meet these people face to face because people that work in, especially in the fashion industry or in demand roles, they get bombarded by a lot of emails and I think if you can do anything to create personal contact then that's going to help you a lot. So personally I went to the Vogue fashion night out and I made a beeline for the marketing person at Mulberry, introduced myself and that's how the conversation got started. If you have any um, people coming in to give speeches at university, perhaps you want to intern with them, just put your hand up or go and introduce yourself at the end. I would say personal contact is the best way forward. In so many industries it really is who you know. So many of my friends that now work in beauty or fashion PR, they don't even list internships on websites, they simply ask their friends like, oh have you got a brother or sister? Have you got any friends or brothers and sisters that would want an internship? So I would say spread the message around amongst friends and family that an internship is what you're looking for and just see what experience you can get from the people that you know. Ellie has asked what internships did you do and what advice would you give to someone who's wanting to get into marketing? P.S. Love your content. Thank you Ellie. So what internships did I do? I did, uh, as I mentioned a few times, a year long at Mulberry. Uh, before that I worked, uh, I kind of did a consultancy for John Lewis. Not really an internship but it wasn't paid so I guess it kind of was. That was a digital consultancy. We basically um, did a lot of mystery shopping around a few John Lewis stores and then helped them get some ideas on how they could improve their in-store experience. That was like a six month project. I also interned at Office Shoes, I interned at some smaller like uh, design companies, I can't actually remember the name of them, but they provided designs to Gap and Next and Marks and Spencers. Um, but my main tips when it comes to interning, firstly to not get ahead of yourself, you have to remember that you are sadly at the bottom of the pile, you do have to do things like making the tea, doing the photocopying, filling the goodie bags and doing all those boring jobs but that is what you're there for, you're there to help out and by having a really positive say yes attitude that's what the employers are looking for and it's by having that positive attitude that's, what going, that's what's going to make them ask for you back. In my personal experience by having this really can do attitude is the best thing that you can possibly do while interning. Arriving early, leaving late, you really do have to just show willing when you are in those early career stages and it will pay off, I promise you. So guys, I feel like I need to wrap it up now because when I do these chatty videos I chat for 
quite a long time, it's probably a half hour long video right now. Let's see how good my editing skills are. So thanks so much for watching, I hope this has answered a few of your questions and given you a little bit of food for thought as well. Thanks so much to Aviva for letting me know about the Shape My Future tool. I definitely think you guys should just give it a go, leave a link down below, it's really interesting and if anything, if it helps you start preparing for your future now, then it's, it's worth a go because I know that it definitely made a few light bulbs switch on in my head, that is for sure, so check that out, all information down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you found it useful, subscribe if you're new and I will see you again very very soon. Bye!